Spanish Airlines Euroleague. I feel devotion. In this episode, the game of the week is another challenge between two great teams. We will see how Fenerbahce Ulka Istanbul, Kahalabaral Vitoria and Rose Baskets Bamberg claim the last three tickets to the top 16. We have a portrait of all the statistics leaders in the regular season. And in closing, the BWIN co-MVPs and the top three for week 10. There are some players who are special even though they do not lead any of the statistics of their team. They are just there when you need them most. They bring that special something, the thing you need to win a game or actually a title. Barcelona Regals forward Pete Michael is one of them. Let's look at what happened since he joined the Blaugranas in 2009. He and his team have reached the final four twice. Paris 2010, when they eventually won the Euroleague title and Istanbul 2012. In between those periods, Pete spent almost an entire season on the sidelines because of injuries. He played only four Turkish Airlines Euroleague games and despite an amazing 6-0 record in the top 16 group, his team was eliminated in the quarterfinals by Panathinaikos in 2011. You may call him a lucky charm, but his real secret is the motivation and hunger that he displays on the floor every night, especially after a defeat. Every year is different. We have, to very, we have to focus on every year is different. My first year here, we won the EuroLeague. The second year, we didn't make it, and the, and the EuroLeague was here in our home. And last year, we made it to the Final Four and didn't win. So every year is different. This year, we focus you know, only on ourselves and only on the goal, and that's to win the EuroLeague. Before facing Seska Moscow in the final game of the regular season, Michael and Barca had a perfect record of nine victories and no defeats. However, the American forward is not the type of guy that is impressed with what a team does early on in the competition, and he is constantly searching for improvements. Always started right, um, especially here in Barcelona. Uh, we've won um, a lot of games, and we've always started off the first round. We've always been either undefeated or lost one game. So we've always started off right, and at the end, the game is different. At the end, you either win it all, or it doesn't matter what you did in a regular season. Now in his fourth season with Barcelona, the 34-year-old Michael is one of the best people who can give us an insight into how his team have changed this season and what the new players have added to what was already an impressive roster. Especially the big guys um, with, with Nathan Jawai and Antis Tomic. Those two guys gives us the inside present, guys who can play one-on-one -on -one with their back to the basket, and that's a, a big difference from the last year's team to this year's team. Um, these guys can really post up and they really can create a lot of fouls, and it's gonna help our team a lot. When two multiple European champions meet on the floor, you just can't miss it. Barcelona Regal dominated at Seska Moscow in the first leg, and both teams promised to give their best in the second meeting even if the Russians needed to win by a massive 22 points to reverse the average point difference to take first place in Group D. The coach of the Russian team, Ettore Masina, was eager to be courtside. For sure, there is a high motivation to show ourselves and our fans that we were not, we are not the team that they saw in the second half uh, in the game of Moscow. It will be very similar to what you do uh, in rugby, you know, when you have the test match where you want to measure yourself and just, you know, test your level, uh, test your opponent and try to be at the best of your possibility. So I think it will be fun for our fans to watch. Moscow is a very different team now to the one we saw in the first confrontation. After that demoralizing defeat at home against Barca, Messina and his players have worked very hard and have steadily improved. I think we improved our transition game and uh, there is no more that sense uh, of uh, three separate moments in the game, defense, uh, transition and, and half-court. Now we, are, we have a better flow, we are sharing the ball more and because of this I think we, we have raised our number of assists and our shooting percentage is going higher. And like most of the teams I think when we feel we, are, we have harmony on offense, also our defense steps up. 
Get on the floor, the Russian side proved that they are now competitive against the greatest teams. The Serbian guard Milos Teodosic is a mark of how Seska's game has improved lately. Teodosic earned our Player of the Game award once again, scoring 13 points with 3 for 4 on field goals adding five rebounds, three steals and two assists. He delivered 35 of his 50 assists in the last five games, demonstrating that he's now more comfortable with the new system developed by coach Messina. In the end, Seska won 78-75. I think that with this win, we, we show that we improve our game and that, that, that we play now in one biggest, in, in one highest level now. Zeska ended the nine-game winning streak of Barcelona. It sends out a strong message to all the other top 16 teams. Whoever intends to go all the way in the competition will have to go through Zeska. After this win, we believe more in ourselves. And for sure, this win will help us, help us a lot in, in, in the future. While Barcelona Regal and Seska Moscow's berth for the top 16 was already decided a few weeks ago, three other teams were battling it out for the final spot available in Group D. Lietuvas Ritas Vilnius was among those teams, but the Lithuanian side went on to lose at Besiktas Istanbul. And it happened while Broze Baskets Bamberg and Partizan MTS Belgrade, the other two teams involved, fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe in the last quarter in their matchup. At that point, winning the game meant qualifying for the top 16. The German team had to overcome some cruel memories last season when they lost a couple of games at home by just one shot, and that cost them their qualification to the top 16. You know, obviously the last two years have been tough, you know, some, some, a few shots here and there, and uh, we didn't make the top 16, but that's definitely our goal to advance in, in, in the EuroLeague qualification. We lost a lot of close games um, last two years in EuroLeague, um, like last year against Moscow in the last seconds and against Malaga here at home, so um, I think we have the experience that we have to close the games if we have the chance to win. Rose Baskets dominated the first half as they built a solid double-digit lead. The German side started very well after the break. Bamberg were up by 14 early in the third quarter, thanks to a three-pointer scored by Bostian Nakbar. Suddenly, everything changed. The visitors started to put more intensity into their game, and Brose Basket slowed down dramatically. Another big enemy appeared on the court, fear. As the clock ticked, though Partizan hauled in the lead. Drew Gordon forced to overtime with a powerful dunk, and Leo Westerman put the away side ahead with a three-pointer with three minutes to go. Another shot would knock Bamberg out of the top 16, and last year's nightmares came back to haunt them. But this time, Casey Jacobson and his team had learned their lesson. The more experience that you have in situations like that, the calmer that you can be. And I think guys like myself and Anton Gavell, who have been here in Bamberg for several years, need to be the leaders of this team. As Jacobson said, the veteran responded. Anton Gavell pushed his team up with a couple of plays, including a great assist for Sharad Ford, who also brought in his experience in the clutch time, together with Bostian Nakbar. The drama continued until the very last second, as Partizan had three free throws to tie the score again. All the bad memories evaporated as Dragon Milos Zavljevic missed two of three from the line, and Brozze Baskets fans could finally celebrate a top 16 qualification. <laughs> Moving to Group A, there was another do-or-die game to be played at Fenerbahce Ulka Sports Arena. 
The hosts received Mapporo Cantu with a top 16 qualification on the line. The Italian team understood what was at stake and were a lot quicker out of the blocks. But the players who came off the bench for Fenerbahce changed the script. Two big dunks by Ilkan Karaman shook the whole arena. The leadership qualities of Omar Onan laid down the path. Benabachi tried to kill the game off on more than one occasion despite Mapaoro's efforts to keep the lead. home side had a lot of offensive options to rely on, like the speed of Bo Mikaleb and the low post presence of Ogus Savas. Pietro Aradori and Manuchar Makoishvili battled to stay in the game, just as they had in recent weeks. The final quarter was exciting and evenly balanced. A three-pointer by Mikaleb gave Fenerbahce their biggest lead of the night, an eight-point margin. A tap-in by the home team's point guard sealed the deal 77-69 for Fenerbahce, who grabbed the last top 16 spot in Group A, while Mapa Orukantu finished their EuroLeague campaign with a battling performance, a game full of pride and with their heads held high. Turkish Airlines Euroleague. I feel devotion. Hi, I'm JC Carroll from Real Madrid Basketball. Follow us on Twitter at Euroleague. Hashtag I feel devotion. See you there. Now to Friday night's games and there was another team looking for its ticket to the top 16. Caja Laboral who had the control of its own destiny. The team now coached by Zan Tabak hosted the Croatian squad of Sedevita Zagreb. Locals were looking for a third victory in a row to clinch qualification. That's why they brought back a fearless veteran. Andres Nocioni returned this year to the team he first signed for in 1999 when he moved from his native country, Argentina. His race to the EuroLeague title started back then. For me, uh, when I used to be a kid, I used to dream we play in Europe, no, no in the NBA. Uh, so that is the reason why I want to be in the Final Four and try to fight for the Final Four. It's going to be tough, but I think we have a good team and we can do it. So just we need to work together and try to reach it. Victoria needed a lot of enthusiasm to believe in a top 16 berth as the
the team suffered six defeats in the first seven games. Nocioni is one to lead by example. He knows how to win and he showed once again against Sedevita. To work, work a lot and try to, to improve my game, try to do all the kind of thing for, to win the game. Um, bring energy on the game. Uh, this is the way how I play. I still play like that. You know, I try to bring energy, try to play hard. He shared his energy with his teammates against the Croatian team. Vittori was red hot in the second quarter to make a 34 13 run and finally control the game until the end. The top 16 ticket was secured with a 97 70 victory. And it was not the only thing to celebrate in Vitoria. Nemanja Bjelica's 22 points did not make him the team's top scorer, but with an almost perfect 9 for 10 from the floor, along with 3 rebounds and 3 assists, he marked a 27 index rating that led him to win the BWIN Co MVP award of this week. It was the second time he scored 20 points this season following a positive performance in Milan in Week 3. He will definitely be a man to watch when the Top 16 starts. His combination of size and shooting ability makes him a perennial mismatch for all his opponents. As we said, Bielitsa is the B-Win co-MVP. We have to go to Israel to find the other recipient. Sean James has produced some brilliant performances this season, but he finally lands an individual weekly award thanks to his double-double in the 78-62 victory over Alba Berlin. He scored 10 points plus 10 rebounds, adding 3 assists and 3 blocks. Not only did he lead his team to victory, but they also maintained first place in Group B thanks to a better tiebreak over Unicaja Malaga, who finished with the same record 8-2. It is now time to unveil the new top 16 groups and the other top finishes. Group A was the most balanced. Real Madrid has the worst record amongst the regular season leaders with seven wins. The Blancos defeated Union Olimpia Ljubljana 91-60 with the best performance of the season by Sergio Llull. Spanish guard scored 14 points, clinching his fifth game of the season in double digits. He also added six assists on his way to an index rating of 22, and he is showing how important he is in Real Madrid's up tempo system. Second, a surprise side BC Himki Moscow region after defeating Panathinaikos Athens for the second time, who finished third ahead of Fenerbahce. In Group C, Zalgiris Kaunas's win over Anadolu Efes Istanbul handed them first place, an unexpected spot for the Lithuanian side ahead of Olympiakos Piraeus. We saw what happened between FC Barcelona Regal and Seska Moscow in Group D. Behind them, Besiktas JK Istanbul made it to the top 16 in its first ever Euroleague season. We've also seen how Brozzi Baskets Bamberg claimed their second qualification since 2005-06. It has been a positive period for German basketball. 
We will have two German teams in the top 16 for the very first time ever, and they will play in the same group. Done with the top 16 qualifiers, the end of the regular season gives us a chance to take a look at the statistics leaders after 10 games. Bobby Brown is confirming the great tradition of American point guards with Monte Paschi Siena. He's on the right track to succeeding Terrell McIntyre and Bo McCaleb and keeping the Alfonso Ford Trophy in the Italian city. He ended the regular season with 19.5 points per game, almost three more than Bostian Nakbar of Brozzi Baskets, who is the runner-up. While Brown and Siena advanced to the top 16, Aaron Baines and Union Olympia Ljubljana ended their run at Real Madrid. However, the Australian centre Baines was really impressive during the regular season, averaging almost a double-double. With 9.8 rebounds per game, he was the king of the paint, finishing seven games in double digits, both in points and rebounds. Back to the point guard's special skills, it was a close battle, but at the end of week 10, Dimitris Diamantidis of Panathinaikos won his duel against former teammate and current arch rival, Vasilis Panoulis of Olympiakos, as the best assist man of the regular season with 6.3 per game. Diamantidis is a true superstar and a six-time EuroLeague best defender. A rookie like Ricky Hickman is trying to follow in his footsteps. He still has a long way to go and plenty of titles to win before he is considered in the same league as Diamantidis. But for now, he is the Steel's leader with 2.3. Coaches say that everything starts from the defense. There is nothing more efficient than taking the ball away from your opponents. As well as Diamantidis, another Panathinaikos member has put together some amazing numbers. Forward Stefan Lazme is one of the most accurate players in terms of field goals percentage, with more than 70%. But he is also a real beast when it comes to stopping his opponents. With 2.6 blocks per game, he's averaging one more than his runner-ups. He set his career high in week three against Ljubljana, blocking five shots. What defines a complete player? There is no exact science in basketball, but the index rating can be an easy shortcut in many situations. EA7 Emporio Armani center Ioannis Borussis finished the regular season with an average of 18.89, ending his EuroLeague season with four double-doubles, including a final one when he visited his former team, Olympiakos Piraeus. His statistics are even more impressive, considering that he is only ranked 68th for average minutes played, with nearly 24. That's it for now, but before we leave you, let's take a look to the top three plays of the week. Number three, Kaunas Lithuania. Here comes Jalgiris Kaunas. Mario Delas with the behind the back pass to Jeff Foote for the slam. Number two, Barcelona, Spain. Genius at work. Milos Tedasic gets the ball in the low post and connects with Sasha Kaun for the slam. What a pass. And the number one play of the week, Madrid, Spain. Sergio Rodriguez to Nikola Miratic to Sergio Yul for the alley of tank.
Airlines Euroleague.